Hi, I'm Jen Jen from Spokane Public Library. I'm Charity Doyle with Spokane United We Stand. May is Asian Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So we hope that throughout the month of May, you would explore and learn about the diverse cultures that represent the ANHBI community. Take a look at this. Hey, this is Kai and Joe with Sensational Cuisine, and we're here uh, for the Asian Heritage Month. And while we're doing that, we're also going to talk a little about the importance of egg rolls in our culture, as well as some other cultures around, like, uh, Thai, like Thai and Vietnamese. So currently, right now, we're uh, cutting up some, or he's cutting up some uh, medium onion. That, that's going to go along with a pound and a half of ground pork. You can use any kind of meat you want. I've done it with chicken, but it dries out a little too much because you need a little, a little bit of fat just to give it that umami flavor. While he's doing that one, I'm also going to mix in some regular cabbage here with some carrots and red cabbage as well. You can use just straight cabbage or, you know, head of, you can cut it up yourself as well. Uh, we use the prepackaged one just because it's convenient for us. <laughs> and if you're looking for a certain weight, certain percentages, this is about uh, a cup to a cup and a half of the mixture to go along with a pound of meat. We like ours a little more meaty though, so we add a little extra meat onto it. Once you got that, once you got all that added in, you would add your spices here, just some regular salt and pepper. Uh, no special salt and pepper really, just regular salt and pepper. Uh, but we do actually also add a little bit of special salt as well, rock salt. Us actually Hawaiian uh, Hawaiian rock salt. That's rock salt, which is also has a uh, lava clay in it, which it gives it a different kind of flavor. It's not as salty. Not as salty. You also add garlic. You also add garlic to taste. We like ours a little more on the garlic side, so we add a little bit extra. And our secret ingredient, our secret ingredient here, uh, chicken. Uh, chicken uh, stock? It's chicken bouillon. Uh, bouillon. Now this recipe you guys are getting is actually uh, my grandmother's recipe. So, so you know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been in the family for a while, uh, let's just say that. Uh, it's, it's not what I actually serve in my truck. I have my own recipe, uh, but this one I, I'm kind of sharing my heart because this is a family uh, recipe for my grandmother. Mm -hmm. straight, from, straight from Laos. All right, so we got all, of our, we got all of our garlic here diced up and all of our onion diced up. We're gonna add that to the mixture. And for the measurements on the on the salt, pepper, and sugar, it would be one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of the Hawaiian rock salt, one teaspoon of the uh, of the chicken. Was it bouillon? Uh, chicken bouillon. Bouillon, and one tablespoon of white uh, granulated white sugar. Yeah. And we're gonna also add in the one the one yellow onion here to the mixture. Try and get as much of that in there as possible. And finally, we also need a little bit of liquid ingredients in here. One tablespoon of fish sauce. And one tablespoon of oyster sauce. You can also use most kind of noodles, but we do prefer this, this brand of noodles right here. You wanna see? And you're gonna be adding about, four, you're gonna be adding about one package per two and a half pounds. We're doing a one and a half pound, so we only added half a package here. You're supposed to soak them in water for about five, 10 minutes, and then let them dry, so you don't want a lot of liquid in here because if you put a little too much liquid in the egg roll, it uh, causes the pop the uh, wrappers to pop and break in the actual fryer. So the more drier you can get your noodles, the better. And to add these in, you want to make sure you actually you cut them up because too long of a noodles, you get uh, a lot of stringy bits in the egg rolls, and it doesn't taste very good if you have a, a long stringy egg a noodle in your egg roll. So this will probably this will probably take a minute. So these noodles up. are. Uh, has multiple names, bean thread noodles, vermicelli noodles, rice noodles. So they're actually pretty bland. Um, they'll pick up, absorb any flavor you add. So every single spice you add in there, that noodle is gonna taste just like all the ingredients and all the spices you just put in there. But while we're doing this, we can also tell you about how the egg roll came to be in America, at least. Back in the early 1800s, it was believed that egg rolls, or the original name at that point, spring rolls before, getting changed to egg rolls over time were brought by early Chinese immigrants to America through various egg-based egg dishes. <clears throat> but the official name for the American egg roll, as it's known, did not come until Chef Henry Lowe 
uh, published an egg roll recipe that he that he dubbed egg roll in a early recipe pamphlet he released. All right, and there's that. And the final ingredient to make egg rolls egg rolls is, as you can guess, egg. About one egg per per pound, or about two two to three for five pounds if you're using bigger batches. And the part for this one is just mixing all the ingredients up in the meat, making sure everything is nice and combined up together. And while I'm mixing this over here, he's going to be getting the wrappers as well as the um, dip, not the dip, egg, the, wash. Uh, egg wash ready. Just to seal the, uh, the roll so it doesn't come apart when you're frying it. I should be using a fork, but I don't want to get do more dishes than I have to. <laughs> so. And for egg for a, for the actual wrappers for egg rolls, you don't uh, really have to use any specific it's, brand. It's up to yeah, personal it's, preference. Yeah, it's basically your personal preference. This is, just happens to be mine because it's actually uh, a lot more pliable, soft, and they're easier to separate. If you get some, some of the other ones you get, they come frozen. They're really hard to separate, and they'll crack on you. And it's actually when you fry this brand, I, to me, it's, uh, it gives a little more crispiness to it. So you're not going to find these in American stores. You're going to have to find yourself a nice, good old Asian store to find these in. But these are worth finding. So hunt down your Asian store and get in. All right. So we have the we have the finished egg roll meat here, and we're going to start rolling them up into our actual egg rolls. Uh, my father here is actually going to show me how to properly roll the egg rolls. So with the portion size, it's going to be about uh, say about a third of a cup. Put it about three or two inches from the bottom. That way, I could just use uh, fold it over and hold the top and pull back and form it. Then two rolls. Now you have the corner side. You can actually just pinch in, pinch in, and continue rolling upwards. Egg wash to seal it. There you go. Your turn. <laughs> I want to say that I'm very thankful that uh, my father here can actually teach me how to roll these egg rolls and how to make them. They're my grandma's recipe to pass down to him, and he gets to pass them down to me. I, mean, I Even though I live in America and I don't have a lot of the Asian culture that I normally would, I still feel like I can know my Asian heritage because I'm learning directly from my father. And one of these days, I hope I can keep passing down this heritage to my children as well. Uh, so here in America, most Asian restaurants will have egg rolls, spring rolls, some sort of some type. But back in the old, old country, or actually still being practiced here by the older generation, is that uh, you just don't eat these daily. It's uh, only for special events, happy events, birthdays, uh, weddings, any kind of celebration. Um, there's it's, it's a religious thing, uh, just like there's certain food you can't eat at funerals for sad events like noodles you don't eat we don't eat noodles during funerals or morning these are yeah so these will not be served during funerals so only weddings uh birthdays and and i guess small get-togethers with friends or things like that but how i like to keep the tradition alive here in america is whenever i have small get-togethers here with like say friends or maybe families or things like that i'll go out of my way and i'll make egg rolls for them because it's a little it's a little way i can share my culture with them. So we're going to go ahead and put in my T-Falls deep fryer. Uh, but if you do not have a deep fryer, you can uh, use a pot to fry it. Um, I can show you uh, with the little trick that my mom and my grandma taught me how to, to figure out oil was uh, at a good temperature was uh, you drop a chopstick, touch the bottom of the pot, and if you have a bubble every second, then it should be about 330, 350 with the perfect uh, frying uh, temperature. Anything higher, you're going to burn it. Anything lower, you're just, it's going to be soggy. So you got to get it around 330, 350. So these, with the amount of uh, meat we put in there, should take about seven minutes to, to finish cooking. So after seven minutes, uh, you'll see it golden brown and floating. That's when the telltale sign that it's done. If it's not floating, don't touch it. <laughs> so we're just gonna hook this up here and let the oil drain off. Here it is, uh, nice and 
not too cool down, but it's cool enough to handle. And that is one beautiful egg roll right there. And to finish off these egg rolls, we have a specially homemade sauce here made by Chef Joe, and he'll explain here what's inside. So this is a sweet chili uh, sauce I made uh, using uh, Fresno chilies, uh, chili de arbol, um, sugar, uh, fresh lemon juice, uh, rice wine vinegar, and then uh, thicken it up with a little uh, slurry of uh, cornstarch. But uh, you can actually just go buy a can of sweet chili uh, sauce from any grocery store that should have it. It's a brand called Ma Ploy. Uh, it's great with chicken and spring rolls. If you can't get your hands on any of the Asian store ones, you can find one at any grocery store that's just called the sweet chili sauce.